What is going on everyone and welcome back to more Black Desert. So with a recent change they made a few months ago, I wanted to go over my node setup and things that I think are important. So in my previous video, I basically talked about how I set up my nodes and this time I want to give a little bit of an update on that. Um, things that are going to be changed in the future and things that I think are going to be important for whether you're a beginner or things I think that just a general would be or like generally is a good thing to take. So as always with nodes, I want to go over the basics, whether you're a beginner or not. Um, I think a lot of people have been getting those rewards that are, what are these? Um, I have one of them. I've been actually using them as well. These boxes that come over here, there's like the artisan goblin worker. Now, a lot of people have actually been asking me uh, what are the best things to use it on and like which cities have the best ones to get. So I want to talk about that. And first of all, if you are a new player and have no idea, like let's say you started a few days ago or a month ago and you're just like, okay, so what is all this in terms of nodes? So first of all, let's start off with the basics. You look at your contribution points over here out of number out of number the number on the left means how many you have available and the number on the right is your total like number of uh, contribution points you can use total right so every node um did this one i don't know either way this one's easier to look at every node is well, like one of these things and they cost a number of certain contribution points some are more expensive than the others. Uh, usually the ones that have the rarer items cost more. And so, yeah, you use those to buy various things. So first of all, in every town, there's an NPC that will be like the work supervisor. And what they do is they allow you to contract workers and or worker exchange. Usually, I this used to be a thing back in the day. Nowadays, I don't really know that many people that just sell workers anymore. Because like, if you have a rare one, chances are you're keeping it. But for your average person, um, the best way to get a worker is to contract one. And basically, the way it works is like this. You use five energy, and then it gives you um, one of like four different tiers. Like uh, white, green, blue, yellow, orange. Um, and then orange being the best ones to artisans, which is what they gave us away. And then you just buy them or like, and then use them, put them on a node, and then you get resources and materials and it goes to your storage. So that's the basics of having it. And now you're probably wondering why should I have them and what should I get? And the basic answer is if you pick any node, they give you various materials my best recommendation for people is get stuff that you think you're going to use for yourself. Um, whether you like doing life skilling and you like processing, cooking, alchemy, just get the materials that you think you're going to need uh, in the future. And then when, if you don't have to buy them later on, you're good. But with that said, I wanted to talk about some of the nodes that I think are very valuable in each region. And... Just, yeah, just give you my thoughts and opinions. So let's start off with the zones that we like start in. Like if you're a new beginner, chances are you're starting in the Western Guard Camp area and you're going to Novelia and everything else, right? So we'll talk about the Balanos region in particular. Personally, I think the... We're just going to speed run this because I talked about it in the last episode. So if you want to watch that, that's cool. But this is just more updated stuff. Uh, personally, I think Timbers... Uh, ores, various uh, fruits and vegetables, and like herbs are very valuable, especially the timbers. Um, so over here we have like ores going on to iron ore is very valuable later on. You may not think so because there's so many or like it just you get a lot of it. But trust me, eventually you will use them. Uh, chicken meat and eggs. These nodes are very expensive and they're very like contested for cooking. Um, and then just generally timbers are a lot of what makes up Balanos and Serendia. Calpheon over here is stuff I have a lot of timbers on and then a lot of uh, saps. So I do alchemy every now and then and saps are always the bottleneck of 
what you're going for. And so generally saps are expensive and it's very hard to get. So that's why I have some going down in from uh, Calpheon to Tariff. Or not Tariff, that's Trent. Tariff is on the other side. So if you look over here, I have like literally half a million of these and another 150,000 of these because I have the nodes going on for a while. And if you look at the market price of the basic timbers, uh, that's 2,500 and like a 2,800. Those are generally higher than like other nodes. So that's why I think they're worth a lot. Um, but generally what you want to do is look at the market for base materials and let's categorize it into tier one, two, and three. So let's look at, uh, cedar, for example. That's what we just looked at. Um, so, okay. These are the timbers, right? These, let's call these tier one materials. The bottom ones, the things you get like as raw materials from nodes and workers. And then... You could turn it into a plank, which is a tier two, and then plywood, which is a tier three. And generally, you don't really make sturdies and sell it. You make it to use it. But let's say these are tier four. So if you get the timbers, you could process them and do tier twos and threes and sell it for profit. Um, obviously, the higher your skill level for like processing, uh, the chances of you processing more than one at a time is higher. Therefore, profit. But if you were just trying to sell it on the market as like, here, I got these. I don't, I'm too lazy to process. I'm just going to sell it. I always look at the ones for the base price and see like what is um, lace in stock or, you know, not too much of a, an abundance where you can't sell it. And these are, I think timbers are usually very good to sell. Um, I would say saps are something you can get a lot of, but... Trust me when I say you would need it eventually. So it's one of those things that I can't, I don't really recommend selling it, but they are kind of a lot of silver, but you, I think you will need it eventually. So use that as you will. Um, going down into the Grana or Kama Sylvia area. I used to have some nodes over here. Now I don't. The Kama Sylvia region is not really that good in terms of like materials. There are very specific things that you could use. Um, personally, I have Tooth Fairy Forest for the Traces of Forest. Now, I think these are pretty decent uh, just because Traces and Alchemy are a thing, and I do that. Um, also, because I had a level 10 node back in the day when I was grinding out the infinite pot, and I was just too lazy to get rid of it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Saps and Timbers, very valuable. That's why this is a good one. And then I I just have Ash Forest connected because I was trying to go for Deborah necklaces back in the day and then it was not great. And so I just have the node there. Um, going down into the Odraxia region, what do I have? I have the chicken meat and eggs. I think these are very valuable. Cooking. I have grapes and potatoes. Uh, these are like the mid-tier items. They'll sell, but they're not like the most expensive. And then this is one that I think is getting buffed in the near future. I read the patch notes on the Global Labs. And um, Mithril is a very contested ore. And right now, the yield of it is very low. I've had this node going on for quite a while. And, like, I've gotten 25 Mithril just from the workers. And, like, 9,000 Nickel ore. So, yeah, you can see how bad it is. And it's getting fixed in the future, which I think is good. But... I do need it, and I'm too lazy to just go mine it, so I'll just have the node going on. Right now, is it worth it? No. Later on, will it be? Probably. I hope so. Um, Duvincroon nodes that I think are decent are the ones that have potion pieces. So if you level up a node, obviously you know how you get drop rate nowadays. Um, Shuriken is one of the HP pots. Uh, Shira Ruins is an MP pot. There's another one. Oh yeah, Blood Wolf is Blood Wolf is HP. I think yeah, I think Blood Wolf is HP. But anyway, there's three potion pieces in this area. Um, there's a lot of very decent ores in here, or like nodes in here you can get. There's a lot of traces. Um, there's a lot of like 
things you can get for nodes and level up your drop rate. And then just a lot of like timbers here. The downside in Duvincroon is the nodes are pretty expensive, but they are worth it. And um, I just didn't have enough to connect what I wanted. And so here in the newest region, we have uh, Mountain of Eternal Winter, as we know. And Jade Starlight Forest is something I think is important because you're going to be here for a few things. One, uh, you're going for the grind and getting the drop of embers and flames. So you want to level up this node in general. And then Jade and Timbers are very uh, valuable. More Timbers and Traces over here. So if you look at the storage, I have Timbers going off. I, honestly, I think the Timbers, the yield of them is kind of low. But I do actually use the Saps, which is one of the reasons why I have it. Uh, rough Jade is very expensive ore, and so I wanted to have those anyway. And so cooking honey, back in the day, there was only one node that gave cooking honey. And so like everyone would have it. Nowadays, there are a few of them. So one over here and one in the Alejandro farm. So getting cooking honey isn't as contested as it was before, but it's good to have them if you are cooking. Um, Tariff is one of the areas where there's a lot of timber and just general good nodes that you can have so back in the day i had a lot of potatoes there are sap nodes which are good a lot of timbers once again have more than half a million of it and just a lot of uh mushrooms and a lot of alchemy and uh cooking materials so pick what you need the contested one over here are the two uh saps and lumber ones which are kind of expensive nodes over here but these are the ones that i'd recommend for the most part but it does require you connecting uh all the way up to the top uh altanova altanova is a lot of ores and yeah they're kind of expensive nodes but wait do i have a worker on there all right we do so we have that going on and altanova is this is kind of funny so back in the day, many years ago, there was a thing called a Grunnel factory, if you guys have ever heard of it. And you would get the materials, um, basically the rough black crystals, and then like uh, iron and whatever materials you need. And then there was a node around here, I forgot what it was called, but you would make Grunnel armors to sell on the market. And that was where you would make a lot of money back in the day. Nowadays, it's just straight garbage, but... Back in the day, that's how people made hundreds of millions of silver when that was like relevant. When people were making like five to ten mil an hour, um, you would be making hundreds doing that. Nowadays, people make like billions of silver factories and stuff. Kind of irrelevant, but good to know. So, yeah, almost two million elder tree timbers here. Will I ever process them all? Probably not, but if they ever, like, made processing relevant or something, then maybe. I, uh... <laughs> I've Guru 35 processing. That's That'll get 50 first at some point. And then everything else is basically connected. So these are the actually new ones I've connected recently. Uh, by recently, I mean a few months ago, so it's, like, the newest. And if you didn't know... Ever since the change of when you level up nodes to 20, you get drop rate increases. And back in the day, they didn't have nodes for Histria and Achman, which are very contested places because uh, you get compass pieces and everything. And so Pilgrim Sanctum Obedience is the Histria node. Uh, where can you find that? Yeah, so if you look up here, it'll tell you like the Histria node. And then the one over here is Encado Coast, which is the Achman node, and those are compass pieces. So I think those are both very good, and it's not really for nodes any at all, but you have to, it's kind of weird because I did a little bit of calculations and I believe it is actually cheaper to connect from Shikatu over here than it is to connect from Valencia City, but I may be wrong. Either way, I had a few things connected to Shikatu and I was like, ah, I think that's cheaper. I, I think I did the math. And then over here, I think, honestly, if you are connecting anything in Valencia, it's because you need the materials. 
Um, so I wouldn't really copy these unless you need it. Um, from Arihaza, I have like more ore nodes, which are titanium and vanadium ore. Vanadium is the one I really need most, and it's used to basically get um, it turns like these ores into mono stuff. So that's what I have it for. But once again, I wouldn't really bother connecting these until unless you really know what it's like used for. Uh, Valencia is a very expensive zone or region to be connecting nodes. I would say if you want the most profit, I would stick to like the Balanos and Serendia regions. A little bit of Calpheon, definitely look into uh, Trent. And down here is some decent ones. But yeah, a few other things I want to talk about before we wrap up is some nodes for all of you who are getting into sailing. And this is what I could uh, tell you before. Um, so Portiferia, these are a lot of fish nodes. And these are, are they really worth it? And eh, It's hard to say. Um, so back in the day, many years ago, getting like good feed and pet food was like kind of difficult to get. So generally you had to make it yourself. And a lot of these are all fish nodes that give a lot of them. However, they're kind of like two hour like cycles. So if you're just on AFK, you'll get a few and it just adds up over time. So these are the kind of fish nodes or the fish that you get. Um, is it really worth it? They're cheap nodes, but it's just like you get a lot of dried fish and stuff. So yeah, generally you would use these for cooking and um, I've just had these nodes on for multiple years. I think it's worth it if you never want to buy feed for your pets again. Uh, just put on a few nodes, leave it on for like a month, get it, and you'll be good. And that should probably last you a few, uh, maybe a year or so. I don't know. But if you leave the node on for multiple years, then I'm basically set for the rest of my BDO career. And um, as we all know that the new, what is it? Something Land of the Morning Light, I think is what it's called. The new region coming out soon, TM, for North America and Europe. is going to be around here. So I'll check out those nodes when it comes out. But here are some things. It's more of like a secret. But it's not really a secret. It's just some tips I can give you. For all of you sailors out there who are looking to get a Carrick and upgrade. Um, if you don't have a Carrick now, what you're going to want to do is get some starlight powder and start your blueprints early and so what these do is if you have the node over here going on for the ship parts basically these are where you get blue carrick here right and whatever carrick you're gonna get just make those and then you'll figure it out so obviously you need the green ones and then you need uh, uh blueprints that you get from them and you're gonna need sunset blackstones this is the material you use to upgrade um your boat gear so you should have these nodes on. You only really need like 10 of each, but it just kind of gives you a lot of them if you have the node connected. So it's like, okay, cool. I wish I could sell them, but you can't. So these are the nodes that you would get them on. This island, this island, and this one, and I think it's this one. So basically, if you look at the node, it'll have a basically excavation or the shovel icon, right? And so if you have all four of them, these are very, exp these are kind of expensive though. So it's one of those things where you have to be kind of invested into sailing already, but it's something I would recommend getting early on just so you have enough materials. Like once you get it and then you'll just be ready to enhance whenever you're done. So I do have extra uh, starlight powder and then I took off the notes because I don't really do sailing as much anymore, but it's something that I would recommend to you guys to do. And um, yeah, these four nodes, connect them. It is, I believe, cheaper to connect from Ilya Island all of these instead of Velia. However, chances are most of you guys have a lot of uh, Velia extra nodes and stuff already connected. So you would probably connect it from Velia. It's probably a few CP more than doing it from Ilya. But, you know, it's like easier because you have more uh, workers already here and you would have to like 
get the house's investment and everything from here to have the nodes going. So if like the best thing I could say is if you are free to play and you're not willing to spend money on a game, just connect it from Belly. It's going to cost you like a few extra CP. But if you are like uh, you have the extra worker slots, it's cheaper to connect it from Ilya. So, yeah. That's uh, basically all my nodes. Um, just to recap, like timbers are very important, ores, saps, things you could use for cooking. Basically, what I would get is your like bottlenecks that you might have when you're planning on upgrading or cooking. So they're expensive or like very tedious uh, cooking materials and recipes. And so like you just want to minimize the amount of effort that you would spend making like meals or something right and then yeah so you want to get the things that you actually need yourself um so as a recap what i think what did we talk about what are nodes how to get it how to connect it um how to get workers there's a few things i could talk about in terms of like getting the best worker ideally you want everything artisans but i think if you can't get artisans professionals are also good there are a few that i still have to get rid of and that are not like uh professional enough like the skilled ones so generally i think nowadays it's pretty easy to actually just get them but the way you could do it is like every 10 levels um when they're not working of course you can um give them a promotion or something and then they will turn into like a skilled to professional or professional to artisan. They raise the rates and stuff. So it's actually a lot easier to upgrade them nowadays than it was before. But I'm just really lazy because I, I think I have just like. I had a lot of nodes going and then I like I changed them around every now and then. So, yeah, I used to have a lot more workers going up like 100, I guess. And um, believe it or not, the best thing to feed them is uh grilled bird meat you know remember when we talked about the node over here it gives like um what is it chicken meat and eggs okay, so here's what you do you take the chicken meat that you have and then cook it you only need the chicken meat you can buy the other materials from the vendor so it's like basically infinite supply and then you turn them into grilled bird meat all right and then you feed them so i have like half a million of them that's after selling another like million of them and then yeah basically you're you're good to go for the rest of your bdo career and then you have a lot of nodes you get more profit it's like an infinite cycle all you have to do is cook them and you're good so overall hope you enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed it drop a quick like on the video if you have any questions which i think a lot of people might have uh feel free to ask join the discord and all that good stuff um yeah, so hopefully this helped. And if you want to take a quick look at my node setup, here it is. Uh, occasionally I do change it, but for the most part, this is what I use. I would definitely take a look at what is the most valuable on the market at on your server, because it might be different on EU than on NA or Korea and whatnot, the C server. So just keep that in mind. Um, Generally, timbers and saps are usually pretty up there, and I think you'll be good. So, with that said, thanks so much for watching. Love to see you guys come back. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and all good stuff. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.